Hello, I'm Hal Lublin. And I'm Mark Gagliardi. Since the dawn of humanity, one issue has gone unsettled. With the fate of the world in the balance, we're here to settle once and for all. Best tip. That's right. Don't worry, everyone. We got this. Podcast should have a theme song. Podcast should not have a theme song. Yes, they should. No, they shouldn't. They sound good. Yeah, but people are just going to skip past it. Hmm. You know what? You're right. We got this. Oh, Hal. Oh, Mark. We are a couple of weeks into our stay at home. How much of the food that you bought for yourself what does your relationship become to that food? Because I found myself dwindling through it very quickly. And then there were things that I was like, oh, clearly I bought you thinking I was going to be healthy and I have not touched you. <laughs> I'm afraid. I've All the salad stuff I've bought, I've eaten mm-hmm. so far. Like I buy mm-hmm. it fresh and then, it, and then I eat it before it goes bad. So I feel good about that, about the fresh stuff. My constant fear for the first week and a half was – I, I don't want to, I had a bunch of frozen vegetables. I like packed the freezer. Mm-hmm. I have chicken breast, all that stuff. I, I was afraid of, I would run out of it. So mm-hmm. I was like, I'm going to cook fresh stuff first. But yeah. now the la- I went to Trader Joe's on Thursday and you, you know, you wait in line because they're controlling the number of people who go in. Mm-hmm. But once I was, I, once I went inside, they had everything. Yeah. So I've relaxed on that and I'm comfortable eating a little bit more, but also. A little, I'm also wary because who knows at what point stuff will run out. So I'm not hoarding it, but right. I'm also trying to be conservative. Have, right. We are at this point able to go to the store. Um, yes. but you know, who knows if that eventually needs to stop. Exactly. And um, when that happens, I have, I'll, I'll have two boxes of Pillsbury fudge brownie mix <laughs> that I ordered as a test from Target. Well done. I was going to say, like, because I know you do your big cheat days on Sunday, is it? Saturday. Saturday. So yesterday uh, was my cheat day, yeah. So how do you how do you deal with semi-rationing and having a cheat day? Well, I uh, – I <laughs> so – Do you order in tr- on cheat day? I do. I got a pizza and wings. Oh, And nice. I ate half of the pizza. The other half I froze, so I'll have it next week. Right on. And – I have a bunch of chips. I still am working on the same peanut M&Ms that I bought a couple weeks ago. Cause <laughs> I, I can't have that much at a time. Yeah. But I also, when I went to Ralph's, so I did two shopping trips. I went Thursday night to Trader Joe's. Mm-hmm. Then Friday morning, I went to Ralph's to get some more staple stuff that you can't get at Trader Joe's. Mm-hmm. And they had my marshmallow fruity pebbles. So oh, I grabbed a box Lordy. of that. Yeah. I, but they I make also a marshmallow fruity, pebble. fruity oh, yeah. pebbles. Oh, Mark. Where I feel like that must have been invented by dentists. Yeah. It totally handed to you with the lollipop. Instead of the lollipop now, it's yeah. a full family size box of marshmallow fruity pebbles. Yeah. Here you go, kid. See you in two days. Mark, it's so good. And now I want to try. <laughs> so I've done the Lucky Charms with Frosted Flakes instead uh-huh. of the shapes. Now I've done the fruity pebbles with marshmallows and kicked it up a notch. There is a Fruit Loops with marshmallows that I've not tried yet. What? That is next on the Man, list. Man, they don't need to mess with Fruit Loops. I'm such an old man when it comes to my cereal. I got mad when they added colors to Fruit Loops. It used to be three, red, orange, and yellow. Yes. Don't give me this purple and green crap. And blue. Blue? Oh, now it's just the whole rainbow. Yeah. Not that there's anything wrong with the rainbow. <laughs> but still. Well, rainbows are visions. But only illusions, Hal. Rainbows have That's nothing right. to hide. That's true. Except so we've been told. Except they all <laughs> – and some choose to believe it. Mm, I know they're wrong. Wait and see. Okay. Boy, it's a pretty pessimistic song when you think about it. It really is. <laughs> uh, but uh, I, I'm doing okay. I'm able to binge and and gorge. But I uh, I also am able to eat enough during the week. It's remembering – to eat and take those breaks. Very important to, to, to do that. I've, I've gotten into the habit of, you know, I work a full day at my mm-hmm. job and then when I'm done, I pack everything up and put it away. So the living room becomes a living room again. Oh, I'm nice. not reminded of work. That's yeah. super important for everybody out there who is in a similar situation. Yeah. Right on. Well, good. But we're not I'm glad here to talk about my setup. <laughs> no, but I, I was just curious because I know that yeah. like, I know you like to go wild on your cheat days. I was I wondering how you were dealing with that with like, that would be impossible for me if I had to go grocery shopping once a week and like just sit there and have 
sweets and junk food just waiting for me. <laughs> you know what I, I mean? like that. I like to see it. I actually kind of like that because it's in one area. Yeah. It's in a, like a concentrated area. So I walk back by it and see it and go in a few days, in a few <laughs> days. What the, what, what really trips me up is last week, this past week, I thought that Wednesday, Thursday and Friday were all Friday. Oh no. Every day felt like Friday. So I kept realizing, oh, I've got to wait a little longer and I need to also need to like cook and meal plan a little better. That's on me. Yeah. Well, but you're doing it. Yes. Uh, and, yes, you're, and we're all making the best of it. And you now have, uh, you now have those delicious treats sitting out on the counter and that you can walk by and dread pirate Roberts them and just go, <laughs> good night, sleep well. I'll most likely kill you in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly right. <laughs> That's what I do every time I walk past them. Oh my god! But you only do. You only kill them once a week. That's right. Um, and they know by now when to really be scared. We're here today. You posted something recently. You were doing. Yes. We got this facts on Twitter, and I, I thought was. it was funny that uh, fully twenty percent of our episodes have been about food. And That's right. my first thought upon seeing that was that seems low. Right? It feels it like, does. it feels like we do 50% food. And today is no different. We recorded another episode earlier. And today, now we're going to talk about food. Specifically, yes. we're going to talk about dip. Oh, Let's I love me it. some dips. Um, yeah. What would, are you, uh, are you a dipper? How are you? You're not a double dipper, are you? No, I'm a single dip. Give me all I need. Unless, uh, well, no, I will never double dip something I've bitten into. Sure. I no, but you, can, you can flip it around to the other side. You can flip it around to the other side. You can also break a chip in half if you want, if it's like going to be a lot of, ch- you know, if you have like, like really you know large tortilla that chips. That's premeditated double dipping if you break the chip in half. Exactly. I know, I know I'm not going to be able to, like, there's enough chip here. I can dip, I can get two dips out of it. I don't want to take something that I'm not going to be able to fit the whole chip in my mouth and put a decent amount of dip on it and then try and eat that. And then it becomes like, you're taking so long to eat it. I could have had like five more chips full of dip. <laughs> That's what's so great about the tortilla scoop. Oh, I love the scoops. And the Frito scoops is uh, anything that's got a scoop in it. You, sure. It's basically just a dip delivery system. It doesn't even matter what you're eating with it. It's The texture's nice, all that, but it's really about the dip. Yeah. So we're going to talk about dips today. Um, I have uh, I have broken this down uh, into six categories. Oh boy. Yeah. And I think, and there's, it's not crazy. There's not a ton in each category. I hope I didn't miss anything huge. Me too. And, uh, if I did, you can point it out. Okay. And I think we can pull one from each of these categories and, uh, and and see what the ultimate victor is. Would you like to know the categories? Yes. I kind of wanted to guess them, but that could take forever. Okay. Here are the categories. All right. Uh, tortilla dips. Hmm. Cheese based. Okay. There's some crossover in these, but I have them divided yes. up a certain way. Around the world. Okay. Sauces that double as dips. All right. Beloved recipes. Oh. And dessert. I'm so excited to play this Jeopardy game. Yeah. This is, it doesn't it feel like a, it doesn't feel like a Jeopardy. Yeah. What was the one? Was it old favorites? Beloved recipes. Beloved recipes. Yeah. Okay. All right. I was making those up on the fly. So now I have to type them in here. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> so thought out in advance. Yeah. I've given this a thought. This is what I'm going to call them. I did. I, sure. I, I decided on the names as we were going. I decided to give them names as we were doing it as if it was sure. Jeopardy. I kind of even heard the music like ding yeah, the, around the world. Yes. Ding, sauces that double as dips. Potent dippables. Where would you like to start, Hal? Let's – I'd like to start uh, – Alex, can you give me – um. Give me tortilla dips for 100, please. Okay. Here are the four contenders in tortilla dips. Okay. Salsa. Yes. Mango salsa. Okay. Guacamole. Yes. And seven layer dip. Oh. What do you think I'm missing in that? It's like a bean dip. Bean dip. I was just thinking of bean dip. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right. Bean dip. See, that, that way you do it. Is, you know, there are parts of, of the, of the seven layer dip, like the shredded cheese and sure. the and seven the layer sour seven cream. layer dip, I had originally put in the beloved recipes category, I see, uh, but moved it back up to tortilla dip, so there weren't only three of them in there. Guess you don't love it. But that adding much. bean dip, now we have four. Okay, 
So let's talk. Uh, I mean, obviously, the first place to talk about is when I saw even the category was called dips. I was like, well, salsa is the one that first comes to mind because anytime you go to a Mexican restaurant, and, and I will say that this is a specific, this episode is going to kind of be um, nation specific to American mm-hmm. eaters. Okay. That's our experience. That's so we that's are. what we are. And that's what, that's where our experience comes from. So there yes. might be some amazing dips uh, that I'm missing from around the world. I apologize, uh, but we do have an around the world section that I think has some great ones. Oh, but yeah. I'm surprised you didn't eat them at Epcot. Right. I did eat a few at Epcot. I'm sure. So, uh, but in a Mexican restaurant in the United States, you get chips and salsa just brought to the table immediately. Yes. Uh, are you a chunky salsa guy or are you a thinner salsa guy? I like a chunky salsa. I, yeah. as long as it doesn't have cilantro in it, cause I'm one of those people who can't eat cilantro. Sure. Cause it tastes weird to them. Mm-hmm. I prefer chunky. I like the texture. I like yeah. getting bits of, especially the chunks of tomato. I like the bits of onion in there. As long as it's, I, honestly, my favorite salsa in the world is from a, a place where the food is not everybody's favorite, and that's El Coyote. Like, their dishes are kind of hit or mm-hmm. miss. Like El Coyote lost some points with me when I saw that they used American cheese on certain dishes. And I'm like, guys, Look, I-, <laughs> I love American cheese too, but you're one of the – I mean, you're one of the neon signs in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Yes. N- denoting, the last place. Denoting iconic Los Angeles. Yes, that's right. It's Sharon Tate's last meal out. Oh, I didn't know that. Yes. That is one of the claims of fame of El Coyote. I think it's been around since like 1946 or 48 Mm -hmm. or something like that. But guys, American chips, come on. Yeah, they're American chips. Look, they're regular dishes I will not defend. But Mm -hmm. I will go to the mat for their ranchero salsa, Mm -hmm. which is a warm salsa. And it's it almost has a tomato sauce-like texture, but you get chunks of onion in there. Mm -hmm. It is fantastic. Generally, though, I don't want to have to – Turn the chip into like a balance board, right? Where you're okay, trying to so keep like the it's liquid too wet on it. And, okay, I see. Yeah, give me like some good chunks, mm-hmm. like fresh, good, good chunks, and let me let me eat that up. Yeah, I go back and forth on that. At home, I like okay. a, a good chunky salsa, but right. in a Mexican restaurant, like my favorite place in town, uh, Mucho Mas, which I hope comes back from the fire that they had like two weeks before this shutdown happened. So, right, uh, Godspeed, Mucho Mas. You're an amazing restaurant. Uh, they have a pretty thin one, and I like the uniformity of a thin salsa because then I don't have to pay as much attention to it. You know what I mean? Like a salsa with a lot going on. I kind of want to get in there and get the goods and uh, things are going to fall off. You got to pay a little more attention. Something about just like the dip done that I like. But it also becomes like a challenge on Survivor where they have to carry like a plate of water on a balance board. Well, where are you so getting the these time, perfectly flat tortilla chips? By the time, Well, you don't. But there's one side it dips down. One side curls up. It's not like it's a bowl. So I feel like you're in the you pocket it, of big scoops. If look, if you're shaky as I am, all of a sudden I turn into like it's like the Hurt Locker when I try to eat a chip with liquid salsa on it, and I start <laughs> there's like a shaking, and then it's all gone. I made splatter out of the table and on my lap, and I barely got any of the good stuff in my mouth, and that's the whole point. Did you just refer to spilling it as making splatter? Yeah, I, I made well, splatter. I made splatter. <laughs> How did you make splatter on the table? It's okay, sweetheart. I'll figure it out in therapy. It's fine. Oh my god, I love. But it. yeah, I can't get as much of this. I it, I will lose more of it mm-hmm. in the transport. That's what I don't like. I don't care if it goes back on the plate. I'm not. I'm similar to you where I like all the food. So I don't like the food touching, but I don't mm-hmm. care if a little sauce gets. It's all going in the same place, and it tastes yeah. good on everything if it's well made. Do you like fresh salsa or um, pre made salsa? Fresh meaning like, you know what I, you know the difference I mean, like salsa out of a jar versus where it's clearly just chopped up tomatoes and onions and, well, you would hate that because it's usually cilantro, right? Right. But even if it's not, I actually like the jar. I have a couple jars of mission salsa right now and a jar Mm -hmm. of of Tostitos, two medium, one mild. And I'll go through those pretty quickly because you can dip anything. You know, salsa is great because you can do chips, you can do, you mm-hmm. can do crackers. If it's a day that's not a, a cheat day, I can I can do carrots. Oh, so nice. we live in the best area too for getting good salsa because when you go into the grocery store, you've yes. got twenty different brands. Most of them come from Mexico and are like old family recipes, and there's some really great stuff in there. Absolutely, 
And um, notice we've gone all this time talking about how great salsa is, and I can't imagine we're going to spend this much time talking about mango salsa, are we? No, but but mango salsa, I think, uh, definitely uh, deserved a mention because it's mm-hmm. always chunky, a slightly different thing. I've seen it, you know, on top of fish as like a sauce, but yep. I've also seen tortilla chips dipped into it. And it's a fun, you know what it feels like? It feels like what? if chips and salsa went to the beach. <laughs> it's like that one summer of Saved by the Bell where Chips and Salsa yeah. worked at Mr. Karosi's <laughs> Beach Club. Sure. Exactly. Ex- yeah. Exactly. What was the name of that, that club? Do you remember? Uh, no. Stacy Karosi was his daughter, and that Stacey was and uh, Leah Remini. Leo- Yes, and then uh, Ernie, uh, Ernie Ernie Sabella, Pumbella? Sabella, Sabella, Ernie Sabella, yeah, played. Uh, Pumba, yeah, Pumba played yeah. Mister uh, Mister Leo Carosi. Yeah, I wanted to say Shady Pines, but it's not Shady Pines. And that's from something else. Yeah, it is. It is from something else. Yeah. Anyway, someone is yelling at their podcast feed right now. Um, but mango salsa, I just wanted to put on there because I think it was fun. I don't think it's going to beat regular salsa to the finals, but the next mm-hmm. one on the list might, and that is guacamole. Yes. The best versions I've found are made table side. Sure. Because then it's, you know, super green. The avocado is, you watch it get mashed up. It's mashed avocados and basically all the ingredients from salsa, lime, onions, frequently cilantro. I love cilantro. I'll put cilantro in anything. Right. And many people are, Tomatoes, you're, you're not alone. Yeah. Do you uh, t- talk to me? What are your, what's your relationship with guacamole like, Hal? I now feel I feel like, like your therapist. I feel like, um, I don't, I, the only memory I have that I can really talk about right now, um, <laughs> is the time that I went to how, the Gaucho how, Grill. How you're sliding onto the floor. You're sliding onto the floor. Um, I'm going to go down the drain now. Goodbye. <laughs> oh, I made no. my escape. Oh, he's Goodbye, spiraling. therapy. <laughs> uh, I, I like, I like it okay. I, I kind of have to be in the mood for it. Mm-hmm. Here's, here, here's where I sit with it. I'm not always up for avocado. I know some people absolutely love it. They'll put it mm-hmm. on everything. Jennifer loves it. She'll I just got her fresh avocado this week because she's putting it on everything. She'll go through it pretty quickly. Mm-hmm. But for me, it's like I, I have to really be in the mood for it. It has to be salted well, like a little bit of lime, mm-hmm. a plenty of salt. So it's got to be like a, a little- well-made, like in the moment guacamole then. Yeah. To me, like the worst version of – Salsa is better than the worst version of guacamole. Okay. That's kind of how I feel. And I like the ingredients yeah. in salsa on their own. Like I, I love cooking. It's the only place I'll eat raw onion really is in mm-hmm. salsa. It's the only place I like it for whatever reason. But I like cooking uh, with onion. I love tomato. I love like the heat, like get a little heat in there, a little pepper. For me, guacamole is good. And I'll bet you the kind that they served at the Malibu Sands Beach Resort was very fancy. Malibu Sands. <laughs> well done. Thank you. Definitely um, did not Google it. Um, I think that it, it it's very good, but I would re- on the whole, I would rather have salsa. It's like for me, it's chips and salsa all day long. What, how do you see? Feel? It's funny for me if, if the two bowls are on the table with the tortilla right. chips, I'm always yeah. going to reach for the guacamole bowl. Okay. If it is a good guacamole, I think you're right that like store bought guacamole is garbage to me. But I don't like, I think generally speaking, it is not great. Uh, so if you have the benefit of having guacamole like made fresh, like for a party or at a restaurant, right? You can have it right then, then it's, it's, one of those wonderful things. If you're not a huge avocado fan, you're not going to love guacamole. Right. But I think, yeah, I think. What knocks that out is bad guacamole is bad. Whatever they have to do to keep it green, because it's not going to stay green for that long. Avocados just don't stay green. So whatever Uh fake thing they have to do to make it stay green. Grinch blood. Grinch blood. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We all know. Yeah. Well, he has more blood now because his heart grew three sizes. So that's exactly. Oh, my God. You know how many guacamole manufacturers were like, ooh, his heart got bigger, you say. Mm, I bet it makes plenty of blood for guacamole greening. Oh <laughs> okay. So let's move on to bean dip. You added, so salsa uh, wins. The, uh, well, the well no, 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 no. We're still in the tortilla section. Now. Oh, bean dip? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Bean- not a fan. Salsa wins. Hold on. Hold on, Hal. We're not done. There is there is one. Bean dip's fine. Like, I've, I always think yeah. of, like, the little Frito-Lay can. But there is one yeah. epic world-class dip that is at a restaurant in Los Angeles called Salsa and Beer that is, you know that it's good because in a predominantly Mexican neighborhood, 
this restaurant has an hour long wait every day between 5 p.m. and 9 p.m. Like it is just everyone in the neighborhood goes there because everyone in the neighborhood knows the food is great. Yes. There is this dip that they have, this bean dip that they bring instead of salsa with the chips. Andy Goldenberg and I will go and we will just sit and we will eat maybe a full size batting helmets worth of that <laughs> before we even get our meal. You know, they sell the little batting helmet of the nacho cheese. This, I want like a full size batting helmet of this dip. Anyway, right. that's the only great, great, like earth shattering bean dip I've ever had. I think you're right. It's not beating salsa, but what about seven layer dip? Seven layers. Do you know what the seven? La- oh my gosh. You're just on team salsa all the way. Even all if you right, love yeah. seven layer dip, you're just going to pretend you don't, aren't you? Let's see how many of the seven layers I know. Okay. Okay. Uh, this is in no particular order. Okay. Sour cream. Yes. Shredded cheese. Yes. Bean dip. Refried beans. I'll give it to you. Yeah. Uh, guac- guacamole. That is four. You've got four. Salsa. Five. Um, wool. Wool, that is, uh, not. Ozone. (laughs) Uh, green onions and olives. Oh, yeah. No, olives. Sometimes replace, sometimes the olives replace with tomatoes. Yeah, you get tomatoes. That's, now I can get on board. Uh, By the way, I'm at the salsa beer website. mm -hmm. You are not in the gallery. I'm very very sad to see, uh, but I'll tell you who is. Who is? And that is a super creepy Freddy Krueger. Wait, actual Freddy Krueger or Robert England? No, like Freddy Krueger, but as a mannequin. Oh. And just standing there Halloween. people like posing. That's a weird uh, who thing knows? to put up on your, uh, on your website. Well, <laughs> I hope it is because otherwise they need to clean up all the cobwebs. <laughs> Can't be sanitary. <laughs> and the, all those cobwebs are like weirdly perfect. Yeah. They're, they're like really absolutely perfect. Yeah. By, by the way, the Freddy could not look more bored. To be standing and taking his picture. Well, he's with a people. mannequin. He's like, but the look on his face is like, ugh, I wish all these people were asleep right now <laughs> so we could do something interesting together. Instead, they're holding my arm and smiling while they stand in front of me. Ugh, uh, what do I even have this glove for? <laughs> They should make the mannequin where Freddy's just smiling and giving a thumbs up and holding out for a handshake with the glove hand. <laughs> Everybody goes up and you know, everybody would do the same thing. Like you go take the picture where you're holding up the leaning tower. You do the, ow, my hand hurts from the handshake with Freddy. Everybody knows that's what you do. Shake my hand. <laughs> um, but we're getting back to seven layer dip. Yes. I enjoy seven layer dip. My only sure. beef with seven layer dip is that frequently, like you got to get there early. You got to get into the seven layer dip early so you can get your ratios right. Uh huh. Fairly soon into the party, seven layer dip becomes just, uh, just a mush. Yeah. Cause a goulash. Yeah. Just kind of a gray thing. But at the beginning, it's, it's shelf life is not terribly long, but it's delicious at the beginning. Yes. But does it beat salsa? No. I don't think so. Lord, no. All right. Salsa wins. All right. Salsa wins that one. Asked and answered. Next. But not asked and answered, Hal. For that category. For that Hal. category. Hal. It's we not are overall. Not, we are not lawyers for the individual things. We are the Supreme Court. We hear all sides. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> Cheese based. All right. Three. Yes. Uh, and I think I know there's a clear winner in this. Okay. I think. Uh, queso, fondue, and nacho cheese, like ballpark nacho cheese. Oh, uh, yeah, there is a clear winner. Yeah. Um, you- nacho cheese is eliminated. It's delicious, but eliminated. Yeah. Because it's super processed. It's tasty, but you know, it's, you can't sit at a party. It's not made with love like some of the other things are. Fondue Correct. is great, but you kind of have to keep heat on it the whole time. Yeah. There is nothing, nothing in this world like a delicious bowl of Rotel queso. If you don't know the recipe, it is Velveeta cheese. Mm -hmm. There's multiple versions of queso. There's, you know, chili con queso. There's like all different. But the version that I love is uh, Velveeta cheese, specifically a can of Rotel Texas diced tomatoes. Like it's like a salsa. And chilies. And chilies. And you put it in a bowl and you mix it up. And you microwave it for a minute, then you mix it up, then you microwave it another minute, then you mix it up, and you repeat until it is 
the most delicious bowl of Americana ever. May I sing for a moment? <laughs> <laughs> By all means, my friend. There is nothing in this world like a queso. Nothing in this world. <laughs> Thank you. Did you just replace is- the word dame with queso? Yeah, I did. You know what? Maybe they replaced the word queso with dame. That's true. Think of that? <laughs> yeah. What are you doing, Rogers and Hammerstein? We all know that that song's about Rotel cheese dip. Mm-hmm. Just eating it out of a bowl. Oh, man. Ugh. So that's so clearly good. the winner in this category. Oh my goodness. I don't, yeah. I don't even know if there's another dip that's going to be better than it. I don't, I, I honestly, so badly. I honestly don't know either. Oh, I but wish let's it was keep going. Yesterday. Uh, <laughs> uh, in six days, I will eat you. Oh my oh dear, my I will eat you. All right. Eat, uh. Now we're going to go to our around the world category. I didn't ask if yeah. you wanted to choose which category you wanted to do next. Nope. You're just, On, you, now you're touring me around. Now I'm touring you. Like we're going it. around the world. Okay. And there's only four in our around the world dips category. What? Uh, yeah. Well, we're American and we don't think anything exists outside of here. That's right. Um, I have on this list and please tell me if there are any that I'm missing. Okay. Peanut butter satay dip. Okay. Raita, which is the Indian yogurt dip. Very cooling. Okay. Marinara. Great for toasted ravioli and mozzarella sticks. Uh, yes, and that, that, that continental cuisine. Yeah. Marinara. And, of the, bre- and, and the breadsticks at an olive garden. <laughs> yeah, the most like- international of restaurants. <laughs> Oh my good. What shall we do today on this French Riviera? Might there be an olive garden nearby where I can dip my breadsticks while I enjoy my soup and salad? It's unlimited, you know. I'm worth it. Oh. Are you done? Yeah. <laughs> when I'm here, I'm family. <laughs> Go ahead. All right. Now I'm done. Uh now I'm done. and and hummus. Okay. You don't want to do like um like fish sauce? See, that's the thing. Like, I got to some things that were dips, but like, but they're really sauces, like sauces even in the name, like fish sauce and soy sauce. Okay, even though so you that's, dip things those, into soy sauce. I see. You know what? These Let are me, sauces gonna, as dips. I'm a, I do have a category that is sauces that double as dips. I'm going to put soy sauce in there. Yeah. And marinara uh, should also be in there. Mar- uh, yeah, I guess that's true. I put that in the international section though. Yeah, of course you did. You needed to fill it out a little bit. Exactly. I couldn't just have peanut butter dip, raita, and hummus. What about uh, – is tartar sauce around the world? Is that a, is no, uniquely American? No, tartar sauce is – tartar sauce might be uniquely American, but I will I, – you know, I'm going to put tartar sauce in beloved recipes. <sighs> I can't no, I'll put it in. I'll put it in sauces that double as dip because it's a, I did this. It's a sauce. I did this to us. Yeah. I'm so See sorry, what you did? everybody listening. Now you got me getting all finicky about my list, Hal. Yeah. I guess so. I think I, I mean I have a clear winner from this, but I want to hear what you think. Yeah, I do too. I mean, I love Raita. I just ate at maybe the greatest Indian restaurant I've ever been to when I was oh. in Bangkok, and yeah. yeah, it was a real special place. And the Raita there was delicious. Peanut butter satay dip is basically just like peanut butter and chicken stock, right? But it's yeah, fantastic. But what has become like an entire section of the grocery store? Yeah, and a thing that I get real excited about is a really good hummus. What do you think? Hummus. Are you one of those guys that pronounces it hummus? That's how we say it in in Israel. Hummus. Hummus. All right. That's right. But you don't, you don't, Hal, you're from Philly. You don't go and order a burrito and say, like a burrito? No, I don't. But I am Jewish, so I can say hummus. Hummus. And I've been to Israel. That's fair. Uh, So when we get to this next section, I'm Italian, so I'll say marinara. Please. All right. I don't mean to, you know. Yeah. To pronunciation shame. Hummus is the winner though. Hummus is clearly the winner though. Yeah. What, uh, do you have a specific kind that you like? No, I don't like it that much at all, but it's okay. <laughs> How did it's we one find the one things? food episode that half the things you're like, meh? Well, well, a lot of the things, sometimes you're, the dip is the whole thing, right? And everything else, like a chip, salsa you could dip a million things in, right? Queso too, you could mm-hmm. dip a bunch of stuff in. Because it's really about eating the dip. And hummus is like that for a lot of people. Just me personally, it's not. Mm. It's It sort of accentuates whatever I'm dipping into. Like a pita, pita or a pita chip or, again, carrots, cucumbers, <laughs> pe- Pita peppers. or a pita chip or, say, pita bread or perhaps a pita toast. Yeah. Or a uh, pita and the wolf. 
<laughs> hey, oh, uh, Peter, Peter, pumpkin eater, Peter, Peter, pumpkin eater, <laughs> Peter, sauce <Sars> god, <laughs> uh, Peter, Bogdana dip. <laughs> I mean, I'm pretty sure that I now want to just refer to hummus as Pita Bogdanadip. Yes, that's correct. Or Bogdipovich, either way. All right, so here's what we have so far. At the halfway point, we have three finalists, salsa, queso, and hummus. When we come back, we will go with sauces that double as dips, beloved recipes, and dessert. Okay. Let's say, you want to take a break? Oh, yeah, I thought that's what I was doing with when we. Oh, that's right. You said take a break. Sorry. Yeah. Welcome back to Fireside Chat on KMAX. With me in studio to take your calls is the dopest duo on the West Coast, Oliver Wong and Morgan Rhodes. Go ahead, caller. Hey, uh, I'm looking for a music podcast that's insightful and thoughtful, but like also helps me discover artists and albums that I've never heard of. Yeah, man. Sounds like you need to listen to Heat Rocks. Every week, myself and I'm Morgan Rhodes, and my co-host here, Oliver Wong, talk to influential guests about a canonical album that has changed their lives. Guests like Moby, Open Mike Eagle, talk about albums by Prince, Joni Mitchell, and so much more. Yo, what's that show called again? Heat Rocks, deep dives into hot records. Every Thursday on Maximum Fun. Macho Man to the Top Rope. The flying elbow, the cover. We've got a new champion. We're here with Macho Man Randy Savage after his big win to become the new world champion. What are you going to do now, Match? I'm going to go listen to the newest episode of the Tights and Fights podcast. Oh, yeah. Tell us more about this podcast. It's the podcast of power, too sweet to be sour, funky like a monkey, woke discussions, man, and jokes about wrestlers' fashion choices, myself excluded. Yeah. I can't wait to listen. Neither can I. You can find it Saturdays on Maximum Fun. Oh, yeah. Dig it. All right, we're back. <laughs> What's our next category? <laughs> I don't know why that always makes me laugh. It shouldn't. We're 200 some odd episodes in. <laughs> the next category is sauces that double as dips, which I do oh. realize applies to many of these things in other categories. Look, I just True. need a way to break them down. Yeah. Leave There's him seven alone. of these. God, he's working hard for you. Uh, yeah, exactly. Come on, people. And if I missed any, I'm sorry. All right, here we go. Ketchup, ranch, cocktail sauce, mayo slash aioli, soy sauce, marinara, and tartar sauce. How? I mean, I personally, I would pick ketchup. Sure. Because I dip a ton of stuff in it. Personally, I would pick uh, marinara because I dip a ton of stuff in it. Yeah, marinara also great. But soy sauce, um, also soy sauce, great. Soy oh. sauce is so – when you said that, I was like, oh, yeah. I mean, that's – because I almost – like sushi is so perfect, but I can't almost eat sushi without soy sauce. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yes. Also, I got another one for you here. Barbecue sauce. Oh, yeah. Barbecue sauce. I want my baby back, baby back, baby back. Yeah. So this is, this is an exhaustive one. Uh, ranch is, I don't know. I've always kind of avoided it because it's just, there was a time when it was everywhere. You know what Hold I mean? On. Like what? Hold on a second. Have you have you ever had the baby back ribs at a Chili's? No, I've not. Are they any good? I have. They're not worth a song. Really? Yeah. Is there another dry. food that that song should should be promoting? It should just be a different restaurant's name. <laughs> I want my PF Chanks, PF Chanks, PF Chanks. I want well, my PF Chanks. You PF do the baby PF back, Chanks. and then instead of the chilies, you can be like, literally eat this anywhere else <laughs> with barbecue sauce. Yeah. <laughs> the baby back ribs are terrible. Sorry, you were saying about uh, that one sauce. <laughs> um, I don't know how much dipping into barbecue sauce I do. I guess yeah, fries sometimes. Uh, fries, onion rings. Onion rings. But like anything that I can dip into barbecue sauce, I prefer my barbecue sauce on the barbecue and I'll dip the other stuff in ketchup. Right. But to get back to ranch. Yes, go ahead. Get it seems ranch, like please. one of those – like it's tasty. I enjoy it. But I don't need it for every pizza crust. Mm-hmm. Every little thing that, you know, now that said, ranch is a great dip for vegetables. Yes. 
but even for for vegetables, I'd rather use like a spinach dip. Yeah. Yeah, I would like, I'll dip vegetables in hummus. I'll dip vegetables in some of these other ones that are on this list further down. Yeah, you know what? It, it might be soy sauce coming out of this list for me. What do you think? Yeah. Cocktail sauce is great. It's specific to just a few things though. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. I, although, uh, you know, my favorite and What's really that? in LA, it's hard to find. I feel like you get better sweet and sour sauce on the East coast, but out here, Genghis really? Cohen, they're sweet and sour, aka duck sauce. Uh huh. When you have that with their New York egg rolls, it's so good. And then you take their crispy noodles and you dip that in there. And then you could dip a little <laughs> bit in the horseradish mustard. Which I is do like a good mixed. Chinese sweet and sour sauce for dipping. Oh, just dipping those goodness. noodles straight into it is just indulgent. And that, Cause that is not what the, either of those things are for. Those are, those two are not supposed to be dating. And yet they're sneaking under the bleachers and making out. When we would go to Lychee Garden. <laughs> When we, would, when we would go to Lychee Gardens in uh, in Northeast Philadelphia when I was growing up, I would take the tea cup because mm-hmm. I didn't drink the tea. I would fill it with white rice and then I would pour duck sauce on top of it and eat it with a spoon as a dessert. <laughs> so it's so sweet. It's so good. Yeah. That's pretty good. Oh. Oh, my god. I goodness. mean, duck sauce I, is great. I was so good at – there's no I, no wonder why I have to have a cheat day now. Like I was just so good at figuring out like here's a new thing. Here's a way to eat more rice. Yeah, see, it's good for you. Rice is a staple. Yeah. I don't, how, what do you think coming out of this? This one's a tough one for me. I mean, for me, it's, I don't think of ketchup as a sauce. I think of it purely as a condiment. So, so to me, it would be between marinara and Mm -hmm. soy. I probably would go with marinara just because I'm, I'm more, I like that tangier. Mm-hmm. I, I like the, the the tangier flavor of a of a mar- marinara sauce versus the very salty uh soy sauce. Yeah, there's so, the problem with marinara for me. It's actually something that you, that you brought up earlier and we're making fun of and now I now that I'm thinking about it using marinara as a dip feels like a misuse of it. Okay. You know what I mean? Yes. Like, it feels like if you're using marinara as a dip, it feels like we're using marinara wrong. Yeah, that's true. I, maybe, maybe soy makes the most sense because you do dip so many. I mean, you could dip vegetables in it. You could dip like mm-hmm. a steamed vegetable in there if you don't cook with it. You could do dumplings. You could do, um, scallion pancakes. Mm-hmm. Like anything can be dipped in it that you don't cook in it first. And sometimes you can cook with it first and just want a little bit extra. So it is like yeah. a really nice. It has a really like unique kind of flavor profile to it, and mm-hmm. it goes with so many different foods, and and is is emblematic of an entire cuisine. You know what I mean? Yes, that's true. Yeah, I feel I feel like soy sauce has to come out of this one on top. Right. Um, it doesn't matter. It's not going to win against some of these other contenders that we have, but <laughs> it's got something's got to win the category, right? Right. All right. Uh, now we go to beloved recipes. Oh. Yeah, this is the beloved recipes category, and there are a ton of them, of course. Every region has its own. Every town has its own. Down to the restaurant or individual house can have a special dips. But these that I, I, I picked these because they seemed like the ones that uh, are the most universal. And they are buffalo chicken dip, oh. spinach artichoke dip, yeah, cowboy caviar. What? And French onion dip. Have you never heard of cowboy caviar? No. We'll start with that one. Cowboy caviar is great. It is chilled. It's almost like a uh, fresh salsa or like mango salsa, uh, in that it's just chilled fresh ingredients that you dip, uh, chips into. Um, but it's beans. It's black eyed peas and beans and then corn and peppers and all those other wonder and rotel, like all those other wonderful things that you would find in like a fresh salsa or a corn salsa with the addition of beans and black eyed peas. It's very good. Nice. That said, do I think it has – oh, and then the final one was French onion dip. Do right. I think that Cowboy Caviar is going to beat these other three? I don't think so. So I'd say it's between buffalo chicken dip, spinach artichoke dip, and French onion dip. French onion dip. Mm-hmm. I know we're talking about like beloved recipes. Yeah. Is that, is that what this – is that what this – did I did I get the category title right? Yeah, beloved recipes. Beloved recipes. Mm-hmm. I feel like the beloved recipe of that one is dump this packet – 
into some like sour cream and mix it yeah, up. Yeah, I guess it is like it's less a beloved recipe and just more uh, Americana comfort food. People, yeah, and there's nothing wrong with that. I like look right. a recipe doesn't have to be. 900 steps but right. uh, in and this case do you ding something because it's not as complex of a recipe i don't think so i mean remember these categories the category names are just for fun and the category delineations are just for fun the re- the real thing like the real question is best dip so if something right. transcends its category i think it can come out the other side i think french onion dip is great for vegetables Okay. And that I think it does better than any of the others so far. Ranch is great for vegetables, but we eliminated ranch gladly. Right. I think that it's for me, I just, I personally, I think it's, and I don't even like onions that much, but I really enjoy uh, French onion dip. It makes vegetables palatable, but spinach artichoke dip is one of my all time favorite bar foods, you know? Okay. And buffalo, ch- have you had buffalo chicken dip before? Isn't it just basically buffalo sauce? It's buffalo sauce, cream cheese, and shredded chicken, and it is magical. Oh, I thought it was for dipping chicken into it. No, no, no. The chicken is in it. It's for dipping, like, Triscuits are great in that. Yeah, it was, I mean, it doesn't really matter. It's, you, what you dip in it is a spoon and then eat it. Yeah. Yeah, you really <laughs> can just dip. You can just dip. Like, oh, man. It's one of those things that's not everywhere, but I had to put it on this list because it is so good. <laughs> Yeah, I've never, I've never had that before. Yeah, I would taste why I've, I've had it at a bunch of Super Bowl parties. It's very Midwestern. Yeah, that sounds Midwestern. Yeah. Cause it's um, like, well, you take a whole block of cream cheese and then you put some buffalo sauce. Exactly. And then some chicken. There's a dip in that there. I didn't put on here that my mother does. It's just, uh, Harry and David's, uh, onion and pepper relish and a block mm-hmm. of cream cheese. And that's it. Okay. Yeah, sure. I don't know. Spinach and artichoke dip seems like that is a crowd favorite. So this may be one of those moments where we go, who wants to be a millionaire style? If we can't decide between the three, the crowd favorite of these is clearly spinach artichoke dip. Yeah, I think that's the one I would pick. And I don't like yeah. artichokes. I like just a spinach dip, but mm-hmm. I, I think those are – that's kind of like a staple. It would be odd not to bring it along. Yeah, but There's a reason why it's as popular as it is. And I don't think it's because uh, it was marketed well. I no, it's because it's terrible for you and delicious. <laughs> exactly. But you think it's good for you. That's yeah, because it says spinach and artichoke. That's yes. the secret. Yes. The greatest trick the devil ever pulled. <laughs> yeah, you're right. 100%. Yeah. Sneaky job, spinach artichoke dip. I'm eliminating you, French onion dip. The one who makes vegetables slightly less healthy but is very good on them. <laughs> um, yeah. I do. Exactly. I do love it. All right. So we have one category left. This is dessert. Mm. Of course. Desserts. The grand finale. And there's only three. And one of them is kind of, I'm not even certain about. Okay. And that would be a strawberry cream cheese dip, which is basically mm. you just get whipped cream cheese and mix in any fruit, anything. So I'm including in that, uh, you know, like you dip graham crackers into, you've been to a party where you'll have like graham cracker sticks and there's a sort of a cream cheese concoction in the middle. Sure. I'm putting that one in there. And then caramel dip, like you put yep. on apples and sure. uh, melted chocolate. Yeah. I, How is I it not think... melted chocolate though? Yeah. I mean, you can also do a lot of, there's a really great Katie Pajosa who is a Thrilly Venture Hour fan who did the, this is my house shirt. That is, that is uh, her artwork. Oh, she's and amazing. I still have my house shirt and I love it. I still have mine too. Um, my voice got really high. I was so excited. Yeah. She makes a fruit dip that is so good and it's, it's some family recipe. You can sort of pick out the different things that were in it as I ate it, mm-hmm. but it also is one of those dips that you just eat with a spoon. Like the fruit. Yeah. You can dip fruit in it and it's all well and good, but I just give me a bowl of that dip. I want to eat it. Yeah. So. Does that beat chocolate fondue though? Yeah, chocolate fondue is good. I I like it. I don't think a dessert dip is gonna beat anything else. So I I'm not as as much as I love dessert. My favorite, almost my favorite part of any meal mm-hmm. is the dessert. All right, we'll pick one right now to eliminate immediately. Um, what was the first one you said? The strawberry cream cheese dip, which sounds yeah, a lot one. like okay, great. So that's the best dip for dessert, but we're eliminating it right now. So we have five left. Uh, you want to just go through and eliminate, eliminate them one by one until we have our winner. The five finalists are salsa, yes. queso, hummus, soy sauce, and spinach artichoke dip. All right. I'm so going to go gonna, ahead gonna and I'm going to eliminate soy sauce. Okay, great. I'm going to eliminate hummus. Surprise, everybody. Wow. 
I'm sorry, you're going to eliminate hummus? How hummus. do you say it? How do you hummus. say it in Hebrew? Hummus. Okay, and Hal has eliminated hummus or hummus. Hummus. So there are three left. Salsa, okay. queso, and spinach artichoke dip. <laughs> do you have an idea between these three who you think the winner is? Yeah, I know who it is. Well, it's not don't say it like that. There's no question. Yes, there is. That's the whole point of this show is there's a question. I have we'll a talk one- about it. If we came in and you were like, it's this, then we wouldn't even have a show, Hal. Mark, I'm not the one with the question. The person who had the question was I Fancy That on Reddit who suggested yeah. this. Thanks, I Fancy That. Thank you very much for the suggestion. It took a yeah. while, but we did get to it. I know the uh, – you know, I, we were asked, yeah. what is the best dip? Yeah. I know the answer. How you we have, but we have to discuss the. Then okay. it becomes what Juliana made fun of years ago when she used to call the show "How Got This" featuring Mark. Oh, she was just being bitter <laughs> about a decision she didn't like. How convenient for her. All right, on the count of three: one, two, three. Okay, so Queso. come on, people of the world. <laughs> We got, it's called We Got This With Hal. Come on. Forget it. Forget <laughs> it, Juliana. We both knew the answer. Sometimes we, yeah, that's we did. the beauty of this. You know, we take yeah. you on a tour of the dips of the world, of mm-hmm. which there are many, and some we did not mention. This is not an exhaustive list. This is, yeah. a, this is a selection of, but it would not change the answer, which is just some melted cheese and some Rotel. Yeah, it's perfect. It's so good. Pick a pick a place you like to go. What's what's your what's your what's your favorite what's your favorite chain restaurant? Do they have queso? Do you like you sometimes it's thick, sometimes it's a little runny, but it always tastes good and you never have enough. You will run out of queso before you run out of chips because you are trying to get so much on every single one. But that's the beauty. <laughs> is it's bottomless. Like if you are doing your fine World class dining at <laughs> the most global of restaurants, Olive Garden. <laughs> that queso and and chip appetizer is as bottomless as the soup, salad, and breadsticks. Wait, there's a place that does bottomless queso. I they all, a lot of them will do like if they bring you queso. If they no, bring it as, if are, they do bottomless salsa. It. Nobody does bottomless queso. Some they know the value well. of the queso. Some places I'm going there immediate queso. now. It's closed. Shoot. Yeah, we can't go anywhere. We have you to make what? our own queso. I'm going to go online and diff- order some Velveeta and Rotel. Yeah, people of the world, in this difficult time, make your own queso. And and it doesn't have to be the actual dip if you're lactose intolerant. I just feel bad for you. Take lactate and enjoy it anyway. But make your own queso. When life hands you Velveeta and a couple cans of Rotel, throw them in the microwave. Also, your life is awesome. If life is throwing you that. Yeah. Go buy a lottery ticket if that's what yeah. life is throwing at you. And you will be rich. But the best dip, it's so good. Th- think of all the things you can dip in queso. <laughs> chips. Anything. Pita chips, crackers, carrots. Yeah. Your a hand. Monte Cristo. Yeah. Just, you know what? Just Oreos. Put, it into, <laughs> put it in a jar that says honey on it and eat out of it like Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> Because it looks like <laughs> queso looks like the way that Disney animators drew honey. Yeah, just yellow, just a yellow with with red chunks in it. With red chunks in it. <laughs> well, that was uh, Winnie the Pooh was sick. But oh. just eat queso like nobody's watching, because it is yeah. the best dip that is asked and answered. This topic is closed. This topic was closed the second the word queso came out of my mouth the first time. Yeah. Yeah. Really. But this topic is now officially closed, asked and answered, but there are many more topics to discuss. So please reach out to us on Twitter at We Got This Tweets. Check out the Maximum Fun subreddit or email us at WeGotThisPodcast at gmail.com. Or you can join our Facebook group and talk about your favorite dips, the dips we didn't mention. Just have a big old dip convention. That is at Facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash We Got This Podcast. Thank you to producer Ken Plume, researcher Kate McManus, graphic designer Uri Kilman, and QA engineer Jen Alba. And thanks, of course, to our musicians, Jonathan Dinerstein and Mike Furman, for our score and theme song, respectively. And thanks to you, the people of the world, 
for staying hunkered down at home, doing everything we can to fight what is going on globally right now, and bringing Hal and I a little bit of joy into our lives with all of your comments on the Facebook group and your continued participation in our silly fun experiment. So for both of us, thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Thank you, thank you, thank you. For Hal Lublin, I'm Mark Gagliardi. For Mark Gagliardi, I'm Hal Lublin. And don't worry, everybody. We got this. We got this. MaximumFun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Audience supported.